Wake your ass up or take a damn nap. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. It's time. I mean, Sean, you were twerking. That's gonna happen. <laughs> Murph, don't be a dick all your life. This is uh, one, of, one of the more fun podcasts I've ever done. Hey, I'll tell you what. If you're not talking about sports in the man cave, you, no, nah, I bet not. So you're not a man. <laughs> That's it. Reveal Suits is a corporation. Mm-hmm. And Reveal Suits is a corporation that was founded by a basketball player. And here is the basketball player. We still call him Carlton Dixon, but he is also CEO of a company that uh, we are all w- have watched from afar and really proud of him. And t- kind of an example of how anyone, if you educate yourself and have these goals, have this vision that almost anyone can accomplish. Carlton Dixon, man, welcome to Stories Inside the Man Cave. My man, Sean, it is uh, good to be on, man. I'm, uh, I am I love the man cave feel. And, uh, <laughs> you know, my, my, my personal man cave is upstairs in my home, but I'm glad to I'm glad to be here with you, man. Appreciate it. I, I am too. And we, we have to give a quick shout out to our sponsor for this episode, uh, Jim Saxon State Farm Insurance Agency, SaxonInsurance.com. He's a Westlake OG, a Longhorn Legacy. There we go. And um, he is, he knows Austin, and he is uh, one that could really cater to your needs, not even just locally, but statewide and even nationally, if that's uh, what you want. Well, I don't know how to get into this as quickly, but for those who maybe are not aware of your story, I obviously followed you back in the day. We graduated from college uh, about the same time. I was at Stephen F. You were at UT. Mm-hmm. Um, but you were on that uh, the transformative years of UT basketball. The running horns, baby. Tom, the running horns, baby. The running horns, yes, sir. Tom Penders, what, what do you remember the most about those years that not only make you smile, but uh, have really made a permanent, lasting impression on your life? Man, um... You know, for me, coming from the inner city, uh, just, you know, jumping onto a college campus, you know, period was, a, you know, just like, wow, you know, this is uh, this is like a freaking city, man. Um, and so just that dealing with that transition was was fun, was challenging, was different. Um, and then there's the basketball piece. Right. <laughs> uh, the basketball piece for me, you know, I mean, it's it's basketball, you know, it. You know we're we're hoopers, and so that was a not going to call it easy, but that no. was a comfortable transition. Uh, you know, it's basketball. There's more attention to detail on the college level. Uh, Coach Penders was, you know, was a hard nosed guy. I remember him just being a funny guy, though. He's always got these one liners that'll, <laughs> you know, it'll crack you up, but you want to cuss him out at the same time. But you know, he's uh, the way he delivers his one liners are classic, man. So it was. Uh, you know, just fun playing for him, his style. Uh, you know, we got up and down the floor, uh, and we had fun. We had some, yeah. you know, we had we had some very good, some memorable uh, seasons. Uh, always in the NCAA tournament. You know what? What kid doesn't want to go through that? So uh, it was, it was a, definitely a great experience. Now, the one part of as we go through the chronological order of, I mean, you're, this whole story to me, I, I told you before the recording, I've been watching you from afar in the most healthy way uh, for the past <laughs> three years, man. It, it makes me, I know we don't have a deep connection, but we do now. It is, I'm very proud of you. Cause I, you know, obviously during COVID, we've seen a lot of people pull the trigger, so to speak on ideas, but yeah. When you were a you were a basketball coach and, and high school basketball coach, athletic director. So this idea, as we're going to transition to your your current company, as you see the logos behind you, I love the marketing. Um, <laughs> Thank you. The idea, and how hard was it to transition from your first love, passion, coaching basketball, to creating a suit company called Reveal. Reveal, baby. Um, yeah, I mean, you you hit the nail on the head, man. Uh, coaching has just always been a long time passion of mine. Uh, coaching, teaching, 
uh, come from a family of educators. Right. Uh, and so just pouring into young people is uh, just what I live for, you know. Um, but, you know, being a big sports guy, uh, watching NBA draft nights, NFL draft nights, uh, seeing guys get, you know, more and more creative with their suit selections for, the, for that night, uh, you know, both on the exterior and then guys started <laughs> doing some guys started doing some creative things on the inside. Uh, and I saw a couple guys, uh, Marcus Smart, most notably, um, you know, pay tribute to Oklahoma State you know, on the inside of his suit, suit jacket panels. And I was like, oh, that's pretty cool, you know, pretty clever. Uh, getting up on stage and, you know, flashing that Oklahoma State brand. And it just kind of resonated with me. And, you know, it showed me that he was proud of his school, mm-hmm. um, that he was loyal to his school, as we all are. You know, people bleed burnt orange, ble- people bleed purple, bleed maroon, whatever your allegiance is. Uh, you know, we know the we know the the college fanatics mm-hmm. when it comes to fandom, and so that's where my mind went when I saw that, and I was just like, "Wait, this is a way to represent your college, just like on a t-shirt, on a sweatshirt, on a baseball cap." This guy just did it in a suit, and then I saw a couple other guys do it uh, the following year, and that light bulb just went off. I was like, "Wait, this could." This could be something. Um, I was convinced that somebody else was already doing it at the time. And, <laughs> and so I spent a couple of weeks really just kind of researching and Googling, setting myself up to see that it was already in existence. The product was, uh, but nobody was doing it. And, you know, my wife and I began to talk and, you know, just kind of that's where that competitive, that competitive fire, that competitive spirit kind of kicked in, <clears throat> kicked in. And I was just like, Oh, I gotta go. I gotta go see what this is about. Um, that following year, I did. I'm taking you to 2017 now. Mm-hmm. Um, I remained in the education world while trying to build this, you know, build this vision, craft this vision in the background. Um, and we were, you know, I was able to get to a point to where we had some interest in the idea, mm-hmm. um, and then I was able to get. Uh, Baylor football and Florida State football to buy in uh, on the idea. And they were just like, oh, yeah, we'd love to rock these suits. And I was just like, bam, game time, right? And um, so that following year, I actually made the decision to to make the leap, make the jump. Uh, it was a tough decision. Uh, number one, I'm walking out, walking away from a true passion. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then number two, you walk away, walking away from a guaranteed salary <laughs> at the end of the day. Uh, and so that was something that I certainly had to get the blessing from the wife, uh, you know, to, to take this leap together. Uh, she remained in her full-time capacity, mm-hmm. but uh, I had to go step out and get this if I wanted it to become what I truly thought it could become. So, um, you know, fast forward four years later and uh, here, here we are, man. So I'm going to pull this up. Uh, this is a graphic that I created for you. You know, these are the pretty much to a T the photos that really, I would say resonate or represent your brand really well to give a visual. Cause we're all visual people. Yeah. Uh, oh yeah. So there we go. I'm going to pull this hey. off. So look at that guy, that guy on the left, <laughs> I think you, 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 it's never too late to become a cover guy for GQ magazine. <laughs> <laughs> now that 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 is not my that is not my uh skill set so I'll, uh, yeah we got we got other people who can do that yeah. so the thing that really and, and listen as we've gotten older i think you can relate to this and i think you can with this story too is especially things that we see and i've learned through the story of life what we think we deserve or what we think should happen, mm. there has to, it has to be on time. And I think you know where I'm going with this. Mm. Your own alma mater, the University of Texas, I think it took you three, maybe four visits to convince them to jump on board with Reveal Suits. Is yeah, that, man, we, uh, we, knocked on the, we knocked on that door a few times. Uh, they were the very first door that 
uh, I knocked on um, just when the when the concept was formed uh, because who wouldn't want their alma mater to yeah. be first? I, I definitely wanted them to be first. Um, but you know, there's some there's some licensing barriers and there were some some other you know challenges at the time. Um, you know, came back a year later, there were still those same challenges. Uh, it was honestly, it was a bit frustrating. Uh, yeah. Being a being an alum, being a uh, former student athlete, um, you know, I thought that the story was, you know, it was just ready made for a great story. Yeah. Uh, but you know, time it wasn't right. Uh, again, it was it was per- it was frustrating. I took it personally, um, but you know, in due time, uh, we were able to uh, get the license. Um, you know, and it, it, it came about and it's been a great account for us. Uh, you know, you know, of course I have, you know, personal connections that I can, uh, you know, who I can market directly to myself, um, you know, which, which helps, but, uh, it's certainly become a, uh, become one of our best selling accounts. Uh, Chris Del Conte, he's a visionary. Uh, and he's, and, and this is not a, insult to ad's past Mm -hmm. Uh, delos dodds did a phenomenal job absolutely for so long and he was a visionary for his era Mm -hmm. um but as far as you know we all have to be very progressive when we're dealing with an enterprise or an idea um he was that way at tcu and and correct me if i'm wrong you had a, a connection to him with reveal uh when he was at tcu uh, no, we had, we had the license, okay. um, but we were, we hadn't, we, we didn't make any headway within the university. Okay. Uh, they had a partnership with the local company over in Fort Worth, uh, who were doing some things, uh, you know, for them at the time, uh, we've since broken down that wall and, uh, ha- and are starting to do some things with their, within their department, uh, there, but. Uh, while CDC was there, we hadn't we hadn't uh, cracked that at that time. So when you finally that that convincing visit, Chris Del Conte had basically said, let's do this at some point and mm-hmm. other partners. Then the NIL comes into the <laughs> and, and how much has that changed the game for you with Reveal? You know, we actually um, we haven't entered the space yet. Um okay. We, you know, I wanted to just kind of take a look and, you know, just kind of see. I wanted the the initial fire, the initial rush to pass first, um, and then, you know, we want to we're going to be strategic with, you know, how we approach it. Uh, we will have a couple of upcoming uh, announcements here uh, for March Madness, uh, so definitely stay stay tuned <laughs> for that reveal. Uh, <laughs> And then we will uh, we'll have more of a presence uh, going into next football season uh, for sure. Uh, we're going to do some creative things with um, a few of the schools who we have official partnerships with. Uh, so I kind of wanted to kind of wanted to work it from that angle as opposed to jumping in immediately. Uh, but we definitely have some creative things both on the male and female side uh, that we're going to be doing in twenty two. So. Uh, should be a fun time for us. No, it really is. There's a lot of momentum right now, and, and yeah. you know how it is. It, it's, it, cha- it's, it's changed the game, though, man. It it and I and I'm happy for them. Yes. Uh, you know, this is coming from a guy who, you know, me and my me and my teammates used to, you know, struggle to order a pizza, you know, <laughs> at at ten o'clock at night because we had already eaten our designated provided meals, and so uh, we know what it felt like to you know, to, you know, have a hand in making the university uh, a lot of money, uh, TV contracts, apparel sales. Uh, we saw our jerseys being sold. Um, and so, you know, I'm just proud of, I'm proud of the young people for speaking up to even get the NIL conversation started. Um, you know, and I believe that the right thing is happening. Uh, you know, so it should be fun to, watch it grow and, you know, hopefully they'll, you know, it won't turn disastrous, you know, but, um, Hey, I'm, I'm happy for them. I am too. And it's, uh, I think right now, just like anything else that's new, uh, I, I, the, the term wild, wild west has been used a lot, <laughs> but, 
we all know there's going to be some boundaries created. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. but man, what a time to be alive if you're a student athlete, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> I, 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 I I'd love to come come to college and make a cool half a meal, you know. <laughs> Okay. Well, think about when you were in Austin, mm -hmm. a Texas Longhorn basketball player. Could, if you think back to the mid '90s, early mid night or late, whatever the, the mm -hmm. '90s, um, would there have been plenty of opportunities? You think here in Austin then, because the oh, tech yeah. industry was starting to go this direction. Oh yeah, um, I would have been, and and I would have been, and you could poll most of my teammates. Uh, I would have been that NIL guy. Uh, you know, I was the I was the party thrower. I was the, you know, guy who was, you know, playing music out in the dorm room. Uh, you know, I'm I'm the host with the most, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I was I was that guy. Um, no, I think there would have been some amazing opportunities. Uh, you know, I'm a I'm a communications major. Yeah. I love doing interviews and you know, being in front of the camera and delivering speeches. That's just my thing. Right. right. And so uh, there would have been, there would have been some pretty cool opportunities, uh, you know, if, if that had existed back then, uh, certainly for me, but I can think of a few other teammates who could have, uh, <laughs> who, who could have made a splash as well. We had some uh, pretty charismatic guys. There was what, Tremaine Wingfield. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> like that. Oh my God. Tremaine, now Tremaine, you talk about the, uh, you talk about the, the GQ model. Uh, he would have been that guy. Yeah, Jermaine would have been that guy. <laughs> There's a long list. Oh, yeah. A long list of guys. Yeah, we, had, we had some characters, man. Oh, Great times, God. though. Really put UT basketball on the tier of the national scene. Yeah, he, uh, Coach Penders wasn't afraid to. I mean, my very first game was in the Dean Dome. At, oh, wow. At Carolina, you know, on CBS. Uh, you know, who who doesn't want that? Uh, mm -hmm. And so he wasn't he wasn't afraid to, you know, take take us to the top, um, you know, take us into, you know, whatever building, uh, put us on TV. Uh, Coach Penders made that happen. Coach Penders, there is no there's no Coach Barnes success without Coach Penders. There is no, you know, the recruiting of the Durants and TJ Fords. And there is none of that without Coach Penders and what he built. Um, and the and the way that he put us out there again, you know, TV games, ESPN games. Dick Vitale came to Midnight Madness, came and did our Midnight Madness one year. Um, and so, no, Coach Coach Penders is to definitely be commended for that. Hey, and he's also a good Twitter follow as well. Oh, know. he yeah 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 he's he's the best man. He's we uh, we had the uh, we had the privilege and honor of coming back together for his hall of fame induction uh, a few weeks back. And, you know, even in his older years, man, he's just still sharp as a tack and still cracking jokes on guys. And uh, yeah, he's, he's still that guy, man. He's, I know I hear the stories from Clack uh, yeah. about him, man. And uh, cause uh, Clack and I went to the same high school. I was just okay three or four years older, but Got you it. knew about the guy. When he was in the sixth grade, that's how mm -hmm. crazy. But mm -hmm. probably the same situation for you and in, in mm -hmm. Dallas. Um, but yeah, when he arrived, you know they had some pretty good success in in year one, year yeah. two, and then it just carried over. Then you guys were probably the most athletic bunch. Yeah, we uh, we we were very versatile. Um, Clack's freshman year, my sophomore year. Uh, we had a lot of guys throw Chico in that mix oh, as well. That's right. I mean, we had. I mean, he could put he could put five of us out there who were six four, six five. Reggie was six six, and that could be the lineup. And he wasn't afraid to play that as the lineup. <laughs> and teams had to adjust to us. Um, you know, we were fast, got up and down the floor. Um, you know, I jumped out the gym. Clack jumped out the gym. Got a big point guard in Chico. Uh, Reggie was the go-to scorer. I mean, we he 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 put together he put together a pretty athletic bunch, man. And then you know you go back prior to Clack coming with you know you mentioned Tremaine. Uh, nobody jumped like that guy. Uh, you know, Tremaine way. Tremaine dunked on Jerry Stackhouse. I remember that. <laughs> I remember that vividly. Uh, I forgot about that. Oh man, yeah, I remember that. I remember that play. 
that that game that dunk vividly. Um, and yeah, we just had a uh, we we had a squad, man. It was it was fun to be a part of. Now, the my one of my favorite parts about this podcast is how we end segment one. And that is with the Jim Saxon State Farm Insurance Agency man cave story. No pressure, but we've had some legendary ones like George Teague, former Alabama Crimson Tide, former oh, yeah. Dallas Cowboy. Well, you know what he talked about. Yeah. You know him. Yeah, uh, that's my guy. He talked obviously about the uh, blasting T.O. at the star. We're at the old uh, Cowboys, Texas. Yes, sir. Area. Yes, sir. But we've had some legendary stories, and we, I've been very fortunate. And the other man cave OGs, we've had some tremendous opportunities to listen to, get into, see into people's lives, and make it like we were there. But if you were sitting around, like we're sitting around in this uh, man cave, yeah. what's your best story that you love telling people that maybe cracks you up? All the time, and the story never gets old. Oh man! Um, okay, yeah, this is the man cave. So I'll uh, I'll take you back. Just the funniest one for me personally that revolves around <laughs> UT ball. Uh, take you back to New Year's Eve, uh, ninety four going into ninety five. No, ninety five going into ninety six. Uh, and you know we had had a game on the thirtieth, and right. Uh, we practiced on the 31st and, you know, New Year's Eve, Austin, Texas, 6th Street. You know, we, you know, you, you're going, you're going to have a little fun, right? There's a few yeah. people out on 6th yeah, Street on New Year's Eve. Out, yeah, there's a few people out on the street. Um, and so we, we had a little fun. Uh, might've come home a little bit late. <laughs> might've, uh, might've indulged in a few, in a, in a few beverages. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, <laughs> And then we had practice that next morning oh. and we get to practice. I mean, first of all, we're furious. We we were thinking that coach was going to, you know, we were all going to get an email or phone call, whatever, no texting at that time, but we were going to get <laughs> notification that practice was called off. Right. We just knew it. And we wake up and, you know, guys just moving slow. Uh, and he has us practice at nine o'clock. Oh, and we are furious and oh. I'm, I'm dragging, man. You know, I, I won't I even lie. Done. I'm dragging. I love to have a good time. I had a good time on New Year's Eve and I'm dragging, right? We get to practice and <laughs> we go through some drills. We do this. And then at, at 920, he blows the whistle and he says, all right, guys, let's get it in. Practice was over. He did it all. <laughs> and I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Like, you got us out here. We Let's play some ball if you're going to have us out here. That was his way of making sure we didn't go out of town. We didn't go home. I didn't slide back to Dallas. <laughs> uh, and he knew we were going to be a little, a little sluggish. He was a little sluggish himself. <laughs> But that was his way of making sure that we stayed our butts in Austin. And I was furious because I'm hurting, I'm dragging. And he had us out there for 20 minutes. It was, it was intentional and very strategic on his behalf. I give, I give him credit for, you know, for, for being a little brilliant in that regard, but oh, I was furious when it came. Oh out. my gosh. I can't even imagine. I mean, it was, yeah. so what did you, did you, Pop the Advil bottle and a uh, yeah. bottle of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Water, water. You know, just, I probably had about four or five bottles of water on the way. I think I rode with. I think I rode with Carl Simpson. Yeah, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, I rode with him to practice, and I was just, just oh god, just like, please. Oh. And so, but oh. 20, 20 minute practice, man. We we were furious. So I gotta remember. So back then. Let me let me see if these. What was the itinerary on Sixth Street? Was it? Was did it begin at Hot Shots? Oh man, Sixth Street. Um, what was it? Uh, there was a there was a spot called Fat Tuesday. Uh-huh. Uh huh. There was uh, a Catfish Station. 
Mm -hmm. uh, Catfish Station was that was the New Year's Eve party, uh, or one of them, shall I say? Uh, there's one that I'm. I remember Hot Shots. There's one other one that I can't call, but uh, but yeah, we uh, we we were well known in a, in a few of those. I'll put it that way. Legends. Yes, sir. Legends. Yes, sir. You guys ran the town back then. Yeah. Yes, sir. If, no doubt. If, if if jerseys could have gone on the wall, they probably would have put our jerseys on the wall. <laughs> <laughs> Well, Carlton, the uh, Reveal Suit CEO, um, I got to reveal, I got to, before we take a break, I got to reveal something here. Um, All right. our, our new sponsor, um, as we know, real estate is a hot, hot job right now to have because of the hot market. And this is who we're onboarding for the new year. Kevin Hutchison Realty. Awesome. Hey, shout out to Kevin. Kevin understands the opportunity here and uh, saw an opportunity here in stories inside the man cave. But uh, if the, the numbers he has told me, COVID has not been a factor in real estate. And awesome. I imagine you can understand. You can relate. Dallas, Fort Worth, the same way. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. No, we, uh, you know, shout out to him and his crew. Uh, you know, for, for withstanding this and still thriving through this. Uh, yeah, I, I have a couple of buddies in the real estate game and, you know, they've uh, they've had a couple of pretty good years. So, uh, yeah, shout out to Kevin and his crew. That's awesome. That is, uh, we're really proud of him. Uh, and he's an Anderson Trojan for life. Okay. So, you know, you got to keep it in the family a there little you go. bit. There you but, go. Uh, we appreciate you, Hutch. But, Got on Dixon. We're going to take a quick break and we're going to talk about your Cowboys. There was some humorous post game uh, interviews <laughs> from your guy, Demarcus Lawrence. Um, and then we're going to break down some more of Texas basketball and get your take on these bowl games because it kind of affects your business a little bit. Yes, indeed. Um, we will have more on that with Carlton Dixon. Reveal suits and reveal suits. Dot com, correct? Yes, suits.com. Yes, sir. We'll go there, man. It is uh, quite a selection. We're proud of this guy, and we're going to talk more with Carlton on the other side of this break. Good. For all of your insurance needs, look no further than our primary sponsor, Jim Saxton State Farm Insurance Agency. The ATX OG has been insuring Austin for over three decades. And get this, Jim Saxton is a Longhorn legacy. He is the son of the late, great James Saxton, who was a Heisman finalist. Be sure to give him a call or better yet, visit his website, saxtoninsurance.com and tell him that the stories inside the Man Cave Boys Recommended you. Offense be cheating, bro. <laughs> they only gave us the turnover, not the touchdown. So, you know, they uh, won the battle today, but, you know, we're coming back strong next week. Love it. Demarcus Lawrence, Carlton Dixon, you're a DFW guy. Um, there's a competition, as we know, so we got to, I guess, lay it out for the audience here. Uh, okay. Dak and the Cowboys defense, Demarcus Lawrence in particular, offensive touchdowns versus defensive turnovers, I believe it is. And the defense showed out against Washington. What was your take on watching them dismantle the Redskins the other night? Man, that was a beatdown, man. Um, and But here's the thing. Like, we've been waiting for the Cowboys to do that. You know, there have been other games that that should have been the result. Yeah. And it ends up not – it ends up being a struggle. Or it ends up being a – that was the game that, hey, you're supposed to beat these boys down, and they beat those boys down. <laughs> um, and that's what, that's what we love to see here locally. Um, you know, because, you know, in years past, that would be a game that – you know, we win 20 to 13, yeah. 20 to 17, uh, you know, and we, they, they won't play, you know, they'll play down to the level of competition. 
And to see what they did on that national stage Sunday night, uh, to see them do it like that, that 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 showed me a lot right there. And uh, that defense, man. Woo, Lord. You, look, if we can keep those boys healthy, they're going to be a problem. The NFC Championship is what I'm targeting. Yes. You know, they, I think the yes. key, obviously, is home field advantage. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I don't want to go back to Lambeau. I don't want to go to Lambeau. Yeah. Yeah. That was a catch, by the way. It absolutely was a catch. It was. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, it absolutely. Oh, was still bitter. I'm still yeah. bitter. Yeah. That's it's one fun. of those plays. You remember exactly where you were, where you were watching it, who you were watching it with. Um, yeah, they just – all of these – catch reviews and you know got to go to the monitor that that kid to see if the ball moved two inches come on man he still got possession of the ball it wasn't play, a football play on. what was that what was that yeah play so on. Des, Des Bryant if you're watching this we have your back we got your back Des on <laughs> behind you and stories inside the man cave podcast <laughs> you know you're, you're promoting NFTs nowadays. We're proud of you too, man. That's awesome. Getting yeah. that on the forefront of it. Yeah, that's uh, right. That's a whole nother podcast right there. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> hey, exactly. Segment two of episode 107 brought to you by farmhousedelivery.com. If you're into organic produce, organic meats grown in the great state of Texas, go to farmhousedelivery.com. Fill your cart. And then use the promo man cave for 20% off of your first order. It's pretty good, Carlton. I, uh, I, 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 I'm going to go ahead and admit it. I had some zucchini squash from these guys. And I'm not oh, a big man. zucchini squash. Okay. I'm a zucchini squash guy now after having Okay. <laughs> I have to get my uh, – I have to tell, uh, tell my wife about that. She, uh, she she loves trying some different things. And, yeah, zucchini squash, she'll, uh, that'll be right up her alley. Oh my goodness! Shout out, shout out to Farmhouse. Deliver farmhouse, me. baby. There you go. <laughs> now you mentioned on, on Dak uh, and the offense, kind of you know we're used to them scoring 20, 21. Well, he was asked straight up if, hey, how does it feel for the offense to get out of the slump? And, and you can kind of predict what Dak said, but much respect for Dak. But he, this is, was his response Sunday night. <laughs> You tell me. I never said we were in a slump. Uh, those were your words. So um, I think it would be hard for you to say that now. <laughs> he, he's not wrong. Hey, he, he, he letting them know, man. Yeah, the, uh, I mean, the, you know, he came back from the injury. Uh, you know, the thing about it, it just, it, it takes time. You know, yeah. we can, you know, it's easy to, you know, Play Monday morning, Monday morning quarterback. Uh, you know when you're not the one out there in real time. You know routes to receivers. You know those are you know those, those things. They depend on milliseconds. Uh, you know, and if you're a millisecond off, uh, it's going to look like you're out of sync. Yeah. And so uh, you know they they couldn't they didn't maintain the the the. The blitz, the blitzing play, pace that they were at, you know, starting out the season, people people drop off a little bit, and you know, but hey, as long as they come back at the right time, and if you know, if this is any indication of what this offense can look mm -hmm. like going forward, uh, going into the playoffs, some folks in trouble, man. Man, Cowboys, I, I don't, I hate that term. That they're, they're back. No, I'll say this. Dak is on another level this year. Yeah. I, yeah. Much different football player. And even Zeke is slimmer, yeah. faster. I tell you, and I tell you what, too, and I'm 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 shouting him out because he's a uh, he's he's bought a couple of reveal suits from me, but uh Tony Pollard, man. Woo, that guy. Hey man, this guy, we gotta and we and we're gonna have to pay this guy because He's going to be getting some some consideration for some number one running back spots on some teams. So we got to we got to take care of Tony, man. Uh, to have that one two punch, to go along with the receivers that we have, to go along with the defense that we have, um, and then you know if we can get we can have, you know if we can get Tyron Smith to play five straight games, uh, you know we can uh, we'll be in a good position. God, this guy. 
this guy's bound to miss eight games a year, man. But it's a given. If we can get him healthy here for the for the stretch run, um, these guys have a chance to be special, man. I, I agree. And then Pollard, <clears throat> if you look back at those great cowboy teams, and if you look at recent Super Bowl champion who didn't just go one and done and, and drop off. They've mm-hmm. had a good one-two punch running back. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, and this is a unique situation. I'd say Jerry's got to find a way to restructure some contracts to keep Pollard. Yeah. Hands yeah. down. Um, I have to. A, a topic that if kind of affects you, and it's a, you well, you've learned really quick. Uh, due to the variant uh, of COVID-19, it has canceled some college football bowl games, namely the Arizona Bowl for you, which you're directly involved with or have ties to. How has that communication been? And then what's your take on – I know it's a liability deal, mm-hmm. even though this variant's not as – I, I, I got to walk a tightrope here because people are going to call <laughs> me out or whatever, but it's not as effective – as far as life threatening as the other variants, so to speak. Correct. Um, yeah, bowl season, man. Um, this has uh, directed us, um, affected us directly uh, on a couple of occasions. Um, you mentioned the Arizona Bowl. That that news hit yesterday. Uh, the Arizona Bowl was or is still going to be the first uh, who agreed to make reveal suits as a part of the uh, player gift packages. Uh, each player was going to receive a, a blazer from us uh, with their schools with their schools lining. Uh, in these cases, it was Boise State and Central Michigan. Uh, and with the cancellation of that game, uh, that that hurts us. You know, we uh, we we basically we don't get we don't get that purchase from the Arizona Bowl. Um, We'll, I think we'll still be uh, successful in getting each athletic department, uh, if not here immediately, uh, possibly for next football season. Uh, you know, hopefully there can be some conversations about suiting up those guys uh, for game day travel. Uh, but the loss of that game certainly hurts us, uh, hurts us from the uh, PR and publicity we were going to get from being there. Uh, I mean, you know, we had, you know, we had hotels, flights, the events were already set. You know, we were going to be at the press conferences. I mean, like that was, that was going to be a big one for us. So uh, to not have that one definitely hurts. Uh, uh, A&M going out of the Gator Bowl. Right. Uh, that's another uh, licensed program of ours. Gator Bowl is another partner of ours. Uh, so there were going to be some introductions made there. Uh, you know, some, some presence there within the AM uh, community and the fans who are going to be there. Uh, so, you know, the loss of that one or them uh, backing out of that game uh, certainly hurts as well. Um, you know, just kind of on a, on a holistic level, uh, you know, being that this, this variant, you know, this is something that we're just going to be dealing with. Uh, I think it'll, you know, maybe it'll, it'll force, uh, programs to maybe operate a little differently. Maybe, maybe they don't send them home over Christmas break next year. Uh, Maybe they keep them and say, Hey guys, you gotta, we gotta stay in the fold. You guys will get your time with family after the new year. I don't know. Um, You know, but you know, maybe the NCAA looks and says, Hey, why are we waiting four weeks to play a bowl game? Maybe they start playing bowl games a week after championship <laughs> weekend. I don't, you know, I don't know what the answer is. Uh, those have just been a couple of things that have come to mind. Uh, maybe the bowl games play earlier or, you know, maybe, you know, if you're in a bowl game that, that goes after Christmas, Hey, maybe you just can't go home. I don't know. Um, hopefully this is the last year that we're even having to face this, but who knows how long this stuff is going to be around, man. So we just got to, it's got to deal with it while it's here. Yeah, I, I agree. I, I think it's, we're all adapting, acclimating. I think yeah. it's going to be like, if you want the flu vaccine, it's going to be like that. Do you want mm-hmm. the COVID vaccine? And I, I, you know, it's just 
you can't impose a will. You have to, but you know uh, that's another podcast too. That's, that's <laughs> a whole other podcast too. I am, I am uh, pro vaccinations. I make no bones about it. I am too. Uh, you know, you you hope that everyone will want to protect themselves, want to protect your fellow your fellow your fellow brothers and sisters out there. Uh, yeah, like I said, a whole another podcast, but uh, I make no bones about it. I am pro vaccination. I am uh, I'm right there with you on that platform. Uh, I, I respect others' decisions. Sure. I may not disagree with – I mean, I may not agree with them. Sure. But, yep. uh, hey, everyone has the choice. Yep. Uh, I, I know you've got to go watch uh, – is it your daughter or niece's basketball that you have? Uh, so my sister, sister. is uh, – my sister is one of the top high school girls coaches in the state, man. Uh, Summer Creek High School out of Humble. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. They're, um, she's got a – She's got a team. I think presently she's around number five or number six in the state. Ooh, class, nice. six, class 6A. Uh, she has her girls down here uh, for one of the big high school t- uh, holiday tournaments uh, here in Dallas. So uh, a- a- after this, for the next three days, I'm, I'm in big brother cheer-, cheer mode. Love it, man. Keep sir. the family. Yes, sir. Hey, there is no fan base better than Yes, sir. Family. Sir, I'm, I'm the biggest. I'm, I'm the – well – my my mother is the loudest. But I'm, <laughs> no, nobody can beat mom in the uh, in in the uh, in the in the in the support and the verbal support. So I love say. it. I love it. Shout out to Carlton Dixon's sister <clears throat> and her high school basketball program, Summer Creek. Summer Creek Bulldogs, yes sir. Yeah, those uh, those high those holiday tournaments are a lot of fun. If oh, they're fun, man. Yeah. If you're watching or listening, and just check your schedule, go online, look because you get to see a little bit more intimate setting. Some of the best basketball players in your state, absolutely, up close and yeah. personal. Um, as far as your alma mater, uh, Chris Beard is trying to mold and figure out the rotations, and because he's got a lot of talent, and one of which from Hendrickson High School here in Pflugerville, a, a grad transfer or yeah, from Vanderbilt, Dylan DeSue. Oh, yeah. Yep. He <clears throat> has really – I guess to, to describe to people, when you are coming off an injury, mm-hmm. you've got to build up that stamina. I mean, as a player, to, to the common viewer or common fan – how do you describe that? You just can't walk out there and be game ready as far as conditioning. No, you absolutely can't. Uh, you know, thankfully, I, I don't speak from the the uh, perspective of being injured. Uh, <laughs> thank God I was never injured. Uh, you know, as much jumping as I did and as physical as I played, I uh, was never injured. Uh, but uh, coming back, uh, you know, from, you know, non-activity, it's – it's impossible to to be game ready right out of the gate. Uh, and that takes, there's even a, you know, okay, being, you know, no activity to getting in shape, to being game ready, to being multi-game ready. <laughs> you know, there's a, uh, there's a lot of layers to that. And, uh, you know, it's not, it's not as easy as it sounds or looks for, by no means. And that's that's a good take. That's kind of a, some good insight. And as a former player, and mm-hmm. now a guy who who was in the coaching industry for quite some time. But Dylan Dessou, hometown guy, he may be the best player on this team. Complete player. He's slowly coming around and being that guy because mm-hmm. he had, was injured. But recently against Alabama State, he really just elevated his game and had this dunk that I can't show you because it was on a network. Hmm. Yeah. Um, but this is their reaction. First of all, the humble Dylan DeSue and then our guy, Chris Beard. This is what they had to say about DeSue becoming that dude. Yeah, you know, like some coaches, uh, the dunk is just two points. I've never been one of those guys. It's a it's a basket that uh, can change momentum, just like there's different kinds of stops on defense that can change momentum. So Dylan's a – Special talent. I just wanted to play hard. Um, I think that we kind of we did start slow. Um, we were down very early, uh, thirteen to two, I think. Um, and I mean, I just had to play hard. That's all I wanted to do. That's all I really tried to come in and do. Now, that's such a Chris. That's such a Chris Beard answer. <laughs> <laughs> that's 
such a beard ass. I love that guy. He is. <laughs> you want to know what? All my years in sports media, I never met him. Really? It was a, you know, I shook hands with him when he was uh, on Bobby Knight's staff at Tech. Okay. That's about it. Didn't get a chance to have a conversation, but I recently saw him at a Christmas party in this in the hood. Okay. In, in okay. my hood. Yeah. And he he's you know he he's got that dry but just next level sense of humor. Yeah, with Chris, man, uh, what what you see is what you get with that guy. Um, you know, and, and I love the fact that he's he's back leading the program. Chris yeah. was our Chris was one of our student managers when I played. Oh, I forgot about that. Oh, you were man. there when he was there. And so just to see that guy uh, transform from student manager, uh, you know, being just a, you know, I could, I could tell though he was a student of the game. I just remember him being, you know, we didn't didn't claim to don't claim that you know we were great friends and hung out all the time, but uh, I remember you just see him being a bit more attentive than the normal student manager, right? Uh, you know, just kind of soaking out. I'm, I'm wanting to say he attended some film sessions. Um, you know, you don't see that out of every student manager. No. And so you could tell that he was he was being a sponge and soaking up uh, soaking up everything that he could. Uh, and those guys, those guys, man, they got a they got a special talent in in Coach Beard uh, to see him uh, put together. Uh, this roster and now be in charge of managing this roster. And then people, people may not think of this a lot too, but to get guys like Courtney and Andrew to stay, um, you know, for their last yeah. years for a new coach in this world of the transfer portal uh, to get guys like that to stay, I think speaks volumes about, uh, about Chris and what they think of what they think of him. That's a great take that I think a lot of people have not really understood how, how difficult it is to not only manage a program, but to keep players yeah. because of that. In today's uh, world, man. Yeah, uh, that, it's, that portal world. Yep. Totally different landscape there. Um, I, I like the their coaching staff with Chris Ogden. and, oh, and man. Uh, It's kind of Super like an all-star assistant. Superstar coach. staff. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. I know all those guys. Uh, I haven't. The only one I haven't had the chance to meet is Coach Howard yet. Mm -hmm. uh, we've exchanged some emails over the years, even when he was at KU. Uh, but, I mean, he's got a – that's a rock star of a staff, man. Um, you know, to get to get guys like Ogden and Coach Terry to Whew. to leave a head coaching gig to yeah. come back and support Beard, uh, you know, just speaks volumes about Chris and what they think about Texas basketball. And, you know, I think it – it may slowly turn into the premier sport on campus. Who knows? We'll see. Anything's possible, with, especially with that new arena that's, that's uh, right. almost that's done. Right. Um, I got to say this, though. It, it, there's probably never a dull moment in that coaching office ever. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure there's not. Uh, <laughs> those, those guys are some uh, very personable guys. Uh, Coach Terry's hilarious. I can just I envision those guys probably uh, probably cracking on Coach Beard for his lack of <laughs> his lack of fashion style, uh, which Chris will admit. By the way, Chris told me one day he was just like, "Hey man, I'm gonna need your help one day." You know, I, this is all I do. So, uh, so yeah, I can just envision those guys having a good time, kind of kind of rubbing him and roasting him a little bit. But, That's funny. You said the fashion. I, he was wearing the coolest T-shirt, yeah. but yet so simple. It had not a caricature, but the kind of like a not abstract, but a you could tell it was Biggie Small's face. Okay. Okay. In, in, in an abstract kind of way. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So uh, it was at that Christmas party. And so the legendary Scott McConnell and Coach Beard, let's get you guys on st inside stories inside the man cave. That would be. Uh, that would be a price of a mission if there was admission. Oh man, yes. Oh, I, now you talk about the guy with all the stories, Scott McConnell. He's got them. He's got them all stored up. I, I promise you that. <laughs> Scotty, well, he is. He is definitely one of the good guys. They're, oh yeah, absolutely, good. absolutely. Hey, but I wanted to show you this. I don't know if you saw it, but a uh, I think it was a third grade teacher 
in Washington, D.C., former Division I basketball player herself. Okay. So she's, I think the kid said, hey, if you make this long distance, low percentage shot on the playground, you got to get us hot chocolate. Okay. Did you see this? No, I haven't seen it. Oh, oh, my God. This girl watched the form, everything. She just stroked the net. Watch that. I can't tell if the kids Let's were excited go. for hot chocolate or Let's excited go. for her. Porn. <laughs> oh yeah, she's 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 definitely played some ball somewhere. That, oh my uh, god, she lined up the form and got those got those steps right. Oh yeah, that was solid. But nothing can beat man those the cheering and that sound of kids the cheering from the kids. Man, it, if I, I absolutely love what it is here that we're doing and building that reveal, but man, there's nothing like. Uh, there's nothing like being on a school campus, elementary school, junior high, you know, just there's just nothing about there's nothing like, a, you know, just that influence that you have on young people like that. So uh, if if I always say we we hit it big and I and I and I get some Oprah Winfrey money or something <laughs> like that, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll I'll retire from reveal and go back in the go back in the culture. Man, once an educator, once a coach, always a coach. Always, yeah, always, always for sure, yeah. Hey, Ben, tell me something good. Carlton Dixon, Reveal Suits, custom made, that is. Tell me something good, sponsored by our guy, Kevin Hutchison at Realty Austin. Tell me something good that's going on in your world, your, your company, or what you've seen in society as we are in the midst of the holidays? Oh man, um, something good. Um, you know, I, I just, I like the fact that, um, I like the fact that Reveal, you know, even through the pandemic, uh, through a tough 2020, uh, I love just what 2021 uh, brought to us, brought to our lives, uh, most notably, uh, the Naismith uh, Pro Basketball Hall of Fame uh, for them to for them to reach out to us and say, "Hey, we've been following you. Uh, wow. We want we want you guys. We want <clears throat> you as our jacket provider." Uh, you know, I was just like, "Are you kidding me?" Uh, <laughs> you know, this this doesn't happen, uh, but it happened to us. And you know, through 2020, uh, you know, I was just like, you know, this is. This has to get better. This is this has to get better. Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. Something's gonna happen. I don't know what it is, but something's gonna happen. And when that call came, um, that has opened up so many doors for us. Um, you know, yeah, who wouldn't want to make jackets? You know, my freaking made a jacket for Bill Russell. Are you kidding me? Wow. Uh, I mean, you know, guys like that, and then the re the current recipients. Chris Bosch, Paul Pierce, Chris yeah. Weber, guys like that. You know, who wouldn't want to do that alone? Uh, but the uh, other doors that have opened just from that partnership, uh, that has truly turned the course of Reveal. Uh, and so I'm just thankful in that regards. Uh, again, the, the visibility and everything that comes with that, meeting folks, all of that's great. But uh, what it's done for the company as a whole, uh, that's been – that's been our good. Uh, that's been our good for 2021, man. So uh, certainly happy about that. And then, you know, just everybody's healthy. Uh, you know, I'm just thankful for for health throughout all of this. And, you know, for those who have lost people, you just feel for them, um, you know, which, you know, which hopefully will result in everyone wanting to, you know, again, get vaccinated, take care of others, take care of yourself. So, uh, just thankful that we have some good health too, man. That's number one. And I think I can speak probably for everyone watching right now when they see this. Uh, we're very proud of you and, and pursuing a dream and see a vision. You put it on paper and, and conceptualized it and made it happen. Thank you. And that's something good because hustle is everything. Hustle. Hey, that's what it is. 100%. And 
Ryan Ivey and, and Kyle Keller and Coach Cartho at Stephen F. Austin. Man, Kyle Keller. Just, what's up, Kyle? Hi, that's you know, Coach Keller. <laughs> what's up, Kyle? <laughs> Absolutely. We've got to get the Lumberjack Stephen F. Austin brand and reveal to partner up. Let's do it. Yeah. I've got Kyle there. Rock, Let's do it. I would rock a purple. SFA logo inside of my sport coat. Let's let's do it. I'll, I'll definitely take care of Kyle and, and the guys. Yeah. Oh my God, we yep. got to get this. I'll have to clip this part and put it on social and there you tag go. them. There you go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'll tell you something good. The year started off awful. We lost some people mm. due yep. to COVID, uh, and one of which you, you I think that you uh, overlapped at Texas. Jason Rees played football at mm. Texas. Mm -hmm. One of my best friends and his wife. Yep. Uh, it's been a struggle, but we were all struggled in some form or fashion. But I'll tell you something good. I saw not only family, but a lot of close friends here the last week or so as the holidays is really a beautiful time to reflect. And through all the conversations, we've learned to take the adverse situations and the language used by these people, including myself, we're usually joking around having good times. Mm -hmm. It was just self-reflection and what we learned from this year. So everybody, I think 2022 is going to be a significant year where everyone has a new perspective because I, and I hate saying this, not that we ever need a pandemic, but it's a way of learning more about yourself and doing right. things differently. That's true. Yeah, very true. And, Always lessons and everything, man. Oh, oh my God. As much as we don't want to admit it, exactly. It is. Right. 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 <laughs> and something good is the fact that we got to connect and bring you on. Um, stories inside the man cave. Carlton, you are always welcome to join man, us. Man, had a ball doing it. I'd love to do it again. Let's uh let's let's definitely make this a uh, make this a another episode for sure. 100 percent and uh we'll connect and reveal suits.com is the way to check out the entire what we're dealing with here they're fabulous suits fabulous options and carlton hook them for life man always and, uh, horns are up and for the carlton dixon former longhorn basketball star and but he's a longhorn for life and for the og man cave boys our ball hearts big mike and coach mo we are out you see the drippy, I'm fitted up. I'm in my car in the giddy up.